This video is going to be about setting up a quick work file and running through a quick assembly of a small PCB on the Charm High CHMT48VB. Uh, the board that we're going to be assembling is this little board here with uh, a couple of passives on it. Uh, you might recognize this board from my uh, work file converter video. We were looking at the design files for this board. I'm not going to be assembling the IC or the button or anything like that. We're just going to be doing the passives today. So let me get you hooked up on the tripod and we'll get going. Okay, so uh, we're all set up here. I have already created the work file for this job on my computer and I've transferred it to this thumb drive here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this thumb drive into the machine in the USB slot. And we're going to go to files. We select file import, and we'll see that the USB drive has detect been detected and that we have this work file on the, uh, on the thumb drive, LED MCU. So I'm going to choose import all. And at this point, we have to wait 20 seconds uh, for the import process to be completed. Um, now, it says 20 seconds before pressing OK. I've never waited less than 20 seconds, so I don't know what will happen, but um, we're, we're pretty close to 20 seconds already, so just give it a few more seconds here. Okay, so we'll press OK here, and now we have successfully imported the file. So if we go back and we look at the file manager, we will see that there is this LED MCU workplace file here generated on today's date. Uh, so if we go all the way back, and we choose run, and then we choose the work file that we just imported. We can choose a few different items. We can choose delete, edit, or load. In this case, I want to edit this because what we need to do is we need to calibrate the location for each of the components here. Uh, you might remember in my other video, which you can find a link to on my channel, uh, I described how the X and Y um, calibration points in the work file converter need to be done from the GUI. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, so this shows every line item for the components that we're going to be assembling. Uh, so there's a handful of uh, capacitors and a handful of resistors. Um, if we choose M stack, this shows the stack ID for the two components that are going to be assembled. So all of the components that are here, I think there's like 16 of them, uh, there are only two different parts being used. There's a 10K ohm resistor and a 0.1 microfarad cap. So uh, what we need to do is we need to set this X and Y offset here. So if uh, before doing that, we need to set the stack ID because I didn't set these stack IDs in the um, in the work file converter. I set them here in the GUI. Uh, you could set them from your work file converter, but I decided to do it here just for the, the video. So uh, for this first part, this 10K ohm resistor, I know that this stack ID is on reel number two. So I go ahead and enter that. And then for the 0.1 microfarad, cap, I need to find which slot that is plugged into. Uh, and currently on my machine, that is plugged into slot number five. So we're going to modify ID and choose five. Okay, so let's save this. And now we need to set the offset. And this is essentially looking at the component in the tape um, as it's been inserted into the machine. The machine needs to know how much it needs to offset from its nominal location. So we're going to choose edit and then coordinate set. Now the machine moved over to stack ID number two and is looking at the location for the 10 kilo ohm resistor. Now in this case, uh, you can see that there are no resistors in the tape here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the head of the machine out of the way and then I'm going to snake my fingers in there and pull some of the components out. So let's see. Okay, that looks good. And... Great, so now if I move back, you'll see what I did. So I pulled the tape out so that this circle here 
is just on the edge of that metal and there are some components exposed. And what we want to do is we want to line up the crosshairs to match that centermost part. So what we're going to do is we're going to enlarge here. You can do fine target. Now fine mm -hmm. target works sometimes, mm -hmm. but it's not great. It's mm -hmm. supposed to recognize the component you see there locked on. It's a little finicky and, and doesn't work great, so I try to avoid using that. Um, I'm going to go into slow motion here and just tap over until the crosshairs pretty well align up with the center of the part. Uh, well within, you know, some margin of error here, so this should be sufficient. I'm going to choose set and then I'm going to click this next arrow here and it's going to move to the next stack ID on that list that we were looking at earlier. You see this is stack ID 5. If I choose coordinate set, the machine moves over to that location and you can see here we have the same situation where there's no components on the tape in this location. So again I'm going to move the machine out of the way for a second just so I can get my fingers in there and then I'm going to pull the tape out ever so slightly until there is enough uh, components exposed that the machine can calibrate to. Okay, now if I move this back, you'll see what I did again. This circle here is right on the edge of the metal and we have a part exposed in the center there. So what we're going to do is we're going to enlarge, do slow step, and we're going to move the crosshair so that it's right in the center of this part. Uh, it looks about right there. Now what I've found is it's best to center to the pocket as opposed to the component because as the parts come in there's going to be a whole bunch of different components sort of uh, floating inside that pocket and so it's best to calibrate to the center of the pocket as opposed to calibrating to the center of any given part. As you can see this part on the left here is shifted up relative to the part that we're looking at at the moment so uh, that's just a that's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Try to center to the pocket of your component as opposed to the center of the component you're looking at at that time. So that looks okay, I'm going to press set. And now our two components are um, have been calibrated, their offsets have been calibrated. And as you can see, they're offset ever so slightly from their zero, zero values. So we're going to click save here. If we were to calibrate an IC tray, which we can do at some point, that window is here. Uh, and if we were doing a panel of boards, then you could set that information here uh, accordingly. I'm not doing that, so uh, we can just leave it as is for the moment. Uh, the next step is to calibrate the PCB. So this should be done anytime you put in a new PCB into the machine. This essentially means that uh, the machine is going to find the 00, zero location of your board. In this case, the 00, zero location of my board is the bottom left-hand corner. And that is recommended from Charm High and it's just a good practice in general uh, because all of the components on your board will be um, placed at an XY location relative to this bottom left-hand corner here. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose, uh, uh, I'm going to save this and then I'm going to back out and I'm going to move the um, head out of the way. So let's see. Uh, we can move here. I'm going to do large steps and I'm essentially just moving the head of the pick and place machine out of the way so I can place the board where it needs to go. You can see we're sort of hovering over that location at the moment. Uh, so we're going to continue doing this. Great. So now it's out of the way and I'm going to resituate the uh, camera here and show you in how I install these boards onto uh, the pick and place location. Okay, so I got the camera set up here. You see uh, this is where the board needs to be installed and this is the board here. So if you were to be looking top down at the machine, you would see a circular little cutout in the bottom left hand corner of this rail. That the center of that circular cutout should match approximately the center of, or the corner of uh, your PCB here. Any offsets will be accounted for in the calibration step, uh, but it's, it's a good idea to try and line it up as best you can. So uh, what I do is I kind of pull the rails open a little bit. 
until these fall into place. And then I try and look from the top down to get that corner centered in there just uh, appropriately. So that looks good. And now we're gonna go back to the GUI to um, actually calibrate the PCB's location. Okay, so to calibrate the PCB, we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. We're going to go to Run, click on the file that we're working on and choose Edit. And then we're going to go to PCB Calibrate. Now, what this is doing is it's choosing three components uh, that are uh, at extremes on the board. So maybe the top left, top right, and bottom right locations of the board. Uh, and we're going to center the crosshairs to the center of those parts. So it's a, basically accounting for any offset in the, uh, the placement of the board in the machine. So let's go ahead and calibrate. What we're going to do is we're going to choose one of these to begin with, C6. And the board, or the head, moves over the board and the camera tries to align to that part. So here, if I zoom in, you can see that the crosshair is over the six and it's not over the part. So that means there's a little bit of error in uh, the correct placement um, when I was just putting the board where it needs to go. So uh, we're going to move the crosshair and try and center it as best we can over the part. Now this step is critical because any offset here will um, show as offsets in all of the other parts that are being placed. So we need to be pretty methodical and, and determined when we're trying to get the center of this part. And press set and do the same thing for the other two. Enlarge here so I can see and try and zoom in to the center of the part. Now take into account the silk screen that you had on the board, take into account the uh, approximate solder mask opening and the pads. Uh, try and really get the center of where you're you're hoping the part will go. And we'll do the same thing for this last part here. And that looks pretty good. Press set and we'll press save. Now if I go back to the component list here you'll see I already did something in the work file creator. I had allowed the work file creator to use two separate heads for this job. So that means um, as it's going down the list, part one or part three here will be picked up with head one and part four will be picked up with head two. And now I don't have two nozzles that are used uh, specifically for 0402s, uh, but I have a Juki 502 in head uh, one and a Juki 503 in head two. Uh, the 502 is good for 0402s and the 503 is good for 0603s. Um, I've had some luck placing 0402s with them, so we're just going to go with it and see if it works for this video. Uh, at this point, everything should be set up and ready to go. So what we're going to do is press save, we're going to back out, and we're going to choose load. Now the machine loads the file here, and we can see all of the components are listed out with their uh, correct X and Y location and their angles. Um, as well as um, the order that they're going to be placed in. Uh, so if you have a specific order that some parts need to be placed in, then you should make sure that that's actually being done here on this list. Uh, we can choose to turn on the camera. Uh, now the camera actually won't turn on until we start running the machine, uh, but we can also turn on the overhead light that uh, the machine has. So if I lift the camera up, you can see that. You see, you can turn the overhead light on, which is kind of a nice idea, nice feature. Um, okay, so at this point, you can choose to either step through each of these placement steps, or you can click Run, which will just let the entire process run through. Uh, for the first part, I always like to do a step. Uh, even for the first board, sometimes I like to step through just to make sure the angles are correct and everything is... Um, actually working as expected. So we're going to go ahead and do that to begin with. I'm going to resituate the camera to hopefully get a better view of this operation. Okay, I think this might be the best view that I can get here. So I'm going to start stepping through this. Uh, it might get a little loud, but you'll see at each step the machine will make a motion and then will wait for me to either press step, run, or stop uh, to, uh, to before it continues doing anything. So uh, to begin, I'm going to press step. You see the machine moves over and it grabs the tape and pulls it out. Next step is the nozzle moves over where it expects a part to be. It goes down, picks up a part, and then the camera moves, or the head moves over to use the second nozzle in this case, since we set a second head to be used for this next part. Press step, 
nozzle goes down and picks up the part. Step it moves over to the camera to check for proper XY alignment in the pickup of the first part. Step and it checks the second part, XY alignment. And as it's moving over to the next step, it's going to account for any offset that it sees in the camera. Step, it moves over to place the first part. Step and it places, it moves over to the next part. Step and it places the second part. Now we're moving on to the third and fourth part. At this point, the first two parts were picked up correctly. I know the tape uh, is working as expected and both nozzles are working as expected. So I would feel comfortable in this case pressing run. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and we can watch the operation. Now note this is the machine working at 50% speed at the moment. Just moved on to the capacitors there. Just like that, our board is complete. So it stepped through all 16 parts and then the head or the, uh, the nozzles of the machine moved out of the way so we can get into the boards here. So if I, uh, I don't want to disturb that, so I'm going to resituate the uh, camera here so we can check out the placement and how well it did. So as you can see, I haven't even moved the board or touched it at all, and uh, just at a quick glance we can see the components have been placed remarkably well. Uh, if we look at R2 and R3 over here, the uh, X alignment is pretty on point, and then if we look at R1, R4, and R5, the Y alignment looks pretty, uh, pretty superb as well. So overall I'm really happy with this board. Uh, so my next step would then be to either continue the run for the other parts, or I could uh, take off the board and reflow it at this point in time. So I just wanted to show how to quickly run up a board and get started with the uh, Charm High CHMT48VB uh, using the work file converter uh, uh, application, as well as editing some of the uh, parameters from the GUI here. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. Uh, otherwise, have a great day.